tonight, the number one ranked Kentucky Wildcats and the Tigers of Auburn University. SEC basketball is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. By Eastern Airlines, Eastern, America's favorite way to fly. By Toyota, who remind you to buckle up your children for safety. It's a good feeling, Toyota. By Canon, the official 35mm camera of the 1984 Olympics. And by Cable News Network and CNN Headline News. against a very young and very good Auburn team. It's a big game for Kentucky, of course. North Carolina won and won impressively on the road at Maryland last night. They're rated number one in the other poll. And Kentucky's going to have their hands full against this good young Auburn team tonight. With me, our analyst and the best in the business, Joe Dean. Joe, tell us first, if you will, a little bit about Kentucky. Well, Skip, they're a tall team with a lot of power and strength. They have speed. They can beat you a lot of ways, a lot of depth. They're led by what we call the Twin Towers. And of course, the twin tires are Sam Bowie, who you see right there, and Velvet Turpin. Both are near the seven-foot mark. Bowie hasn't played in two years. Timing has been off, but it gets better with every game. And there's Melvin Turpin, one of the other seven-footers, playing a little stuff of Reno for you. He's become one of the great offensive players, really, in college basketball. In the backcourt is their outside threat, 6'5", from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Indiana Mr. Basketball, Jim Master, and he's their zone buster. And as you can hear, the Kentucky team playing before a very hostile crowd, a sellout here. And the Auburn team is young, but they're good, aren't they? Well, Skip, they are good. They've been inconsistent. They got off to kind of a rough start in the early going. They lost some games, but they're 3-0 in this league. They've won three straight. The reason for the inconsistency is that they start freshman guards, and that'll create an inconsistency for anybody. They're led by Chuck Person. He leads this league in scoring. I call him Mr. Smooth, and he's the second leading rebounder in the Southeastern Conference. But one of the most exciting players to play in this league ever, 6'6", 270 pounds, Charles Barkley, and is he awesome? He's had a bad back, though, and so he's had some problems. He's going to play a lot here tonight, and they need him. Should be a good one. Kentucky is 12-0, Auburn 9-3, and, and we'll be back with the lineups right after this. tells you all you need to know. Michelo, some things speak for themselves. To World Cup champion Phil Mayer and pro photographer Russ Kinney, challenge is the name of the game. That's when Canon's AE-1 program shows the stuff the winning shots are made of. Because to catch the best, you need an instrument with all the features a pro wants. Hey, Russ. Can I try that? Sure. With a program mode that even lets Phil shoot like a pro. Oh. Shaver Sun. The AE-1 program. So advanced, it's simple. Canon, the official 35mm camera of the 1984 Olympics. At last, one airline has done something unique for America's senior citizens. For only $1,199 each, we can travel anywhere Eastern flies in the U.S. for a year. So we're going to visit our niece in Boston, our kids in L.A., and dear old mom in Florida. If you're 65, you qualify. You can even get a passport for a companion who travels with you regardless of age. Call Eastern or your travel agent for details. Eastern's get up and go passport. It was worth waiting for. Eastern, America's favorite way to fly. It takes guts to redesign one of the world's most popular cars. Introducing Toyota Corolla Reborn. This family sedan was reborn to please you with more comfort. Reborn to please your family with more room. Reborn to please anyone with its mileage and affordability. The 1984 front-wheel drive Toyota Corolla. Reborn to please the world. Oh, 
We're about to get it going from Memorial Coliseum in Auburn, and here's your public address announcer, Paul Ellen, with the starting lineup. Wildcats and the Auburn University Tigers. Now here are your starting lineups. First for the Kentucky Wildcats. At forward number 31, 7-1 senior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, Sam Bowie. Bowie averaging nine points a game, shooting 55%. At forward number 34, 6'8 sophomore from Roberta, Georgia, Kenny Walker. Averaging 11, shooting 57%. At center, number 54, 6'11 senior from Lexington, Kentucky, Melvin Turpin. 16 a game, 64%. At guard, number 20, 6'5 senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jim Master. 11 a game, 43%. At guard, number 23, 6'1 sophomore from Valparaiso, Indiana, Roger Harden. Three points a game, 42% percent the coach of the Wildcats, Joe B. Hall. At forward, number 45, 6'8", sophomore from Brackley, Alabama, Chuck Person. 21 a game, a 58% shooter. At forward, number 31, 6'5", sophomore from Gaston, Alabama, Vernia Strickland. 8 a game, 54% from the field. At center, number 11, 6'7", senior from Tuskegee, Alabama, Greg Turner. 10 points a game, 56% shooter. At guard, number 12, 6'1", freshman from Augusta, Georgia, Gerald White. Six a game, shooting 46%. And at guard, number 15, 6'4", freshman from Cassini, Florida, Frank Ford. 12 points a game, a 48% shooter. The coach by Sonny Smith. There are your lineups, and we'll be back with the play-by-play -play story right after this. Introducing the longest rust-through protection truck warranty in America. Five years or 100,000 miles. We are Dodge, and this is how we back our trucks. Only Dodge offers this revolutionary factory warranty as standard on all 84 full-size pickups and Ram chargers. And it's yours at no extra cost. At Dodge, we don't just say our trucks are tough, we prove it. We are Dodge. Plus up to $500 cash back on selected models. Oh, my arm. Rub something on it. I got Ben Gay. I don't want to go back to work smelling like Ben Gay. Don't. Try sports cream. It smells nice and clean. Does it work? Sports cream has a strong clinically tested pain reliever. It starts to penetrate immediately to relieve sore muscle pain. No workout today? Sure. I feel great. Why? You uh, usually smell like Ben Gay. Not anymore. Sports cream, the fast-acting pain reliever that smells great. Take their basketball seriously in Auburn, don't they? Here are your officials for the game tonight, and that's the way they are from left to right, Rutledge, Galvin, and Bill Frazier. And we're ready to go, and we sincerely hope you'll enjoy it. These teams have met 60 times. Kentucky has won 50 of them. But this league used to be Kentucky and a bunch of dwarfs. It isn't that way any longer. In fact, the SEC is 62 and 26 versus non-league foes this year. A little over 70%. Not too shabby at all. It will be Greg Turner jumping against Sam Bowie. And Kentucky, with the height advantage, has the ball. This is Roger Horton. He's played by Gerald White. Auburn's open up in his zone defense. It's a 3-2. They're going to try to shut down the inside and force the outside shooting. And Kentucky's guards have not been shooting very well. There's the big guy with the great touch. He was 15 of 17 against LSU earlier in the year, and you get it to him, he'll fill it full all night long. You don't get to be 12 and 0 by accident. This is a good basketball team. Auburn at the other end, and an air ball put up by the youngster Frank Ford. And the ball will belong to the Wildcats and a foul. I think on Greg Turner. Strickland, 31. Yeah, Strickland picks up the foul, his first, team's first. We've played 45 seconds. There's Sonny Smith, with play instructions. And here come the Wildcats, who lead it to nothing. Roger Harden up top, they get it into Bowie, back to Harden, to master on the way. 
Bowie with a little hook. And the two big men have each cashed in, Joe. Harden got beautiful penetration, got right into the middle of that zone defense. They came to it. He made the beautiful bounce pass. Bowie made it go home, walking. Traveling on Jarrell White. A couple of mistakes by those young freshman guards early in the game, and that's something that happens when you go with you. Rick Turner, the senior, is trying to kind of light a fire under him, saying, come on, you guys, let's get in this thing and get it going. Harden across the line. Kentucky, a very poised veteran outfit. Boy, wheels, deals at 6 nothing, and they've scored every time now. He's trying to be guarded by 6'8", Chuck Person against 7'1", Sam Boy. And Chuck Person, the league's leading scorer, can't convert. And here come the Wildcats, and they lead it 6 nothing with 18-10 left in the half. Gerald White across the way. His first, second team. Kentucky got it up the court quickly. They got it to the trigger guy, Harden, to master, and he's fouled right here by number 12, Gerald White, along the sideline. Kentucky opened up man-to-man -man defensively with a lot of pressure. They seem to want to get it inside, and so far they've done it with ease. Master on the right baseline. Harden up top. Gets it back from Bowie. of the night for Kentucky big battle and a foul on the Wildcats and on Roger Hart. He followed his own shot. Ball was on the floor. He went after it. Auburn ball. Right there. Harden up with about a 15-footer. Wouldn't go in and out. A lot of work on the boards. You saw Turner. You saw Turpin Harden on the floor. He reached in and fouled. We have played 215. Auburn is yet to dent the scoreboard. Here's Percy. And still pointless in the game as Frank Ford misses and a foul on Kentucky. Kenny Walker underneath. There's Coach Joe B. Hall on your screen. He's won 337 games in his career. 261 of those at Kentucky. 75%. Good play by Bowie with the inbounds pass. Well, they had a man master all alone at the other end. Blocked away by Turpin out of bounds, and the ball goes to Kentucky. Oh, did you see that big guy skip almost seven feet, re reject, and then flat go get it. Watch him. He rejects it right here. Watch him go get this ball. Didn't get to see it, but he exploded across there to get it. What a hustle. Still 6 nothing. 17-15 left first half. Puts it down, and if their guards hit those shots, it's going to be a long night for Auburn. Good play by Turpin. He threw it to him. The defense black. He came right back to Harden. He drilled it. Gerald White gets it across the line, and that's the foul on Harden. Yes. Uh, they're going after each other. No question about that. Second on Harden. Third team foul. Gerald White, the freshman. They think he's the great point guard of the future here with the Auburn Tigers. Harden's got him defensively. Bowie is guarding Chuck Person, the leading scorer in this league. Interesting matchup. White trying to get Auburn untracked here. Person pass through and gets the hoop and a fine shot. He faked right, crossover step, went left. On the move, he got nothing but the bottom of the sack. Beautiful. It's 8-2. It took him three and a half minutes to get on the board, but sometimes once you get that first one, you get rolling. Master can't play it. Their guards are one out of three are Kentucky. Auburn in a hurry. And the driving basket is good and a foul as well. Score the goal. Auburn does that very well. They'll outlet the ball very quickly. They bring it up the side. And if you're not set up defensively, they'll score before you get the defense ready. Strickland took it all the way. Past it counts. 8-4. Charged underneath. Here he comes, Skip to the guy. Strickland out of the game, and in comes Charles Barkley at 6'6, 265. He's big enough to go to work. He's had back problems, and because of it, he's not had a lot of work, and his conditioning was a problem, and he loves pizza pies. He got up to about 273. 
Auburn still zoning, still 3-2. Kentucky still very patient. Auburn throw it away. And a two-on-one break and a good pass and a drive to basket for four. Just like that, it's an 8-6 ball game. 15-45 remaining in the half. Bowie against the double team on the baseline. Master back to Bowie. A little two-man game. Knocked away from him. And now Auburn can tie the game. Good defense inside by Greg Turner. First set. No. Kicks out to White, and Auburn still has control. From the baseline. Beautiful shot. Nothing fancy. He just took Harden one-on-one down in the left corner. Good fallaway jumper, and this game is tied. And to say this student body loves it, they're all on their feet, Lauren. Roger Harden with it up top. They get it into Bowie. Now Master, now Harden. And he may have walked, but he did. He shuffled his feet just as the ball came to him. Kind of a questionable call, but one of the best. And a substitute is coming in for Roger Harden. James Blackman. Blackman will check in. Right now we have a timeout on the floor, and we got a good one going. 14-51 remaining first half. With timeout, your score. Auburn 8, Kentucky 8. Out here, I'm the boss. But a few years ago, I felt foreign countries were telling me how much fuel I could have. Now I hear Phillips has geared up two super refineries for oil that's tough to work with. Stuff America has lots of, but refineries wouldn't mess with before. I can use any fuel, but a buy Phillips. They're helping us use American oil and be our own boss. Fine products for you and your car from Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. Excellence and Michelob. Michelob, some things speak for themselves. smooth and mellow taste tells you all you need to know. Michelo. Some things speak for themselves. When you want scores, you can find them just about anywhere. But when you want more than just scores and highlights... CNN Sports is on the scene. CNN Sports now takes you back. CNN Sports has learned to be a ball. Turn to CNN Sports for live updates throughout the week. Programs that put you in touch by phone. And sports reports from experts who bring the story home. When you want more than just the score, turn to CNN Sports, where highlights are only the beginning. Here's some of that action underneath. Bowie, Turpin, Barkley. Turpin and Barkley are matched up against each other. Turpin is in that 6'11", 7 foot range, 250. Barkley, as we've mentioned, 6'6", 270, 265. And what a battle that is underneath. Barkley's starting to play a little more now, Skip. He didn't play a lot in the early going. But in their last game, he played 33 minutes. So they're hoping they can get maybe uh, 35 minutes out of him here tonight if they can. You see number 10 for Kentucky, James Blackman into the game. He, too, a freshman out of Marion, Indiana. That shot rejected as person went to work on the baseline. I think Bowie got to that. Showed you the power and the strength of the inside. It's one of the things they do well. Bowie, Turpin, and Kenny Walker, who's a sophomore, had a lot of international competition last year from the sports festival. He can really get up, too, at 6'8". This is Frank Ford. He's the most publicized recruit at Auburn since... Mike Mitchell now stars for the San Antonio Spurs. That'll be a foul on Blackman. They seem to be clearing it out for number 12 there. Gerald White, the good freshman, and he uh, gave uh, uh, Harden some problems, Roger Harden, and now Blackman reached out and hand-checked. And, of course, they called a foul, and there's a good shot of Coach Sonny Smith. He's 102 wins, 103 losses in his career. What a way to make a living. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's the truth. Here's Percival. What a move he made. Yeah. Reverse dribble to the baseline, came back to the middle, got it to the glass. Absolutely magnificent. 
And uh, this home team, the Auburn Tigers, they're up two. They've scored 10 straight, but Turpin takes care of that. And we're tied at 10 with 14.08 remaining in the first half. He can hurt you underneath, Melvin Turpin. He can hurt you at the top of the team. Gerald White against Blackman in front court. Kentucky still man-to-man -man defensively. Good look inside, and an easy basket to his opening for Greg Turner, his first points of the night. And a beautiful pass away from the defense. That was the key by Gerald White. Turpin, same spot. Bangs it up there a little too long. Ford on the drive, and will go, but there's the big fella. Charles Barkley catches in his first points. And it's 14-10. 14 of the last 16 points in this game have been scored by Auburn. Auburn's gone 2-3 in their zone. That's what Barkley does best. Offensive glass. He follows shots and he'll bring them home. Blackman on the move. We may have a foul and goaltending. Let's see. Kentucky foul on Blackman. No goaltending has been called. Let's look at it again. Well, that was the break at the other end. Basket didn't go right here, but right here, watch this. A little stuff by Charles Barker. So Blackman now, like Harden, has two fouls. And into the game for Auburn is Paul Daniels, a six-foot senior. And Mormon beats third. They picked Bowie, brought him over the top, and from the top of the key, he drilled it home. Turpin bangs it home from near the foul line. Person got there a little late defensively, was looking toward his bench. And that caused him to step on the play. It's 16-12, Auburn with 12.40 left first half. Joe Dean, Skip Carey with you from the Memorial Coliseum, where a capacity crowd is seeing a good one. Kentucky zoning for the first time. It's a 1-3-1. Good luck by Turner. The basket will go. A foul will be called. He really tried to bring it in. Charles Barkley, you talk about taking it to the basket. He tried to take everything down. But Turpin, Bowie were there trying to shut it down. Both of them. Right there. Turpin got a piece of his arm as he went by. Wouldn't go. Look at the basket give. The foul is assessed to Bowie. It is his first. And Charles Barkley, a 75% foul shooter, will get two here. Looks like Barkley's back is well, Skip. He's jumping and running well. You see his stats shooting and foul shooting. 60%, of course, most of that's so in close, but he missed two critical ones there. So Kentucky can move back to within a basket if they connect here. Master puts the jumper up. Nope. Their guards are not shooting it well. Good steal there by Daniels. Prayer to the shot. We're going to have a foul against the youngster, Frank Ford, his first. Tough break for Auburn, too, because they got it out quickly. They had the numbers three on one and just did not handle the ball well enough. Cost them two. You'll see it right here. Blackman set up beautifully defensively. Ford tried to kick it off, but it was too late. Again, Kentucky can make it a two-point game if they convert. They led 8-0. They now trail 16-12. Bowie, great look. And a foul, and Turpin will go to the line for two. He does that so well. He'll look for Melvin Turpin, who he has all the respect in the world for. He knows he's a great offensive player. Wide open right there, but they fouled him on the way by. Or it, would have, it would have been a cinch two underneath. The two twin flyers handling the ball beautifully underneath. Turpin, an excellent free throw shooter for a big man, 81%. The foul was on Daniels, his first. That's seven for Melvin Turpin. He's the leading scorer in the game. Chuck Person has six for Auburn. Turpin shooting over 81% at the foul line on the year. Vern Strickland back into the game for Auburn. And now a timeout will be called. We have timeout on the floor with 11.47 remaining in our first half. And 
With timeout, your score, Auburn 16, Kentucky 14. There's perhaps only one 10-minute dinner you'd serve with a 10-year-old wine. New Le Menu frozen dinners. Each Le Menu is perfectly planned. Like tender chicken parmigiana with fettuccine alfredo and Italian green beans. But it's worth remembering, Le Menu also goes well with just water. New Le Menu dinners from Swanson. Miles didn't kill these trucks. They died of exposure. We are Dutch, and this is how we build our truck. With more rust-fighting galvanized steel than any top-selling full-size pickup, and America's longest no-extra-cost factory rust-through protection truck warranty. Five years or 100,000 miles on all 84 full-size pickups and ram chargers. We are Dutch. Plus up to $500 cash back on selected models. We're getting up a football game against the guards. Don't miss Burt Reynolds and Eddie Albert in The Longest Yard, Saturday on Superstation WTBS. Tonight's SEC action is brought to you in part by Dodge, makers of Ram Tough Dodge trucks and your local Dodge dealer. Don't forget, a week from tonight, we'll be watching this Kentucky team again at home against the Vanderbilt Commodores. We'll have it for you. 8.05 Eastern Time, a week from tonight on WTBS. And while we have a moment here, a reminder, the tickets for the SEC basketball tournament to be held Wednesday, March 7th through Saturday the 10th at Memorial Gymnasium on the Vanderbilt campus in Nashville are now on sale at the 10 SEC universities. The complete book of tickets for the nine tournament games costs $60 a book. Any tickets not sold by the institutions will be placed on public sale through the Vanderbilt ticket office after February 15th. Any questions in regard to tickets should be directed to the ticket managers at the respective Southeastern Conference School. Auburn 8 of 16, 50%. Kentucky 6 of 10, 60%. Pretty good shooting. We got a good one going here. Person. And the War Eagles still have the ball. They go low. It's broken up for a foul. deep to Charles Barkley for the stuff. The ball was kicked around. I couldn't tell who shoved underneath. The master is called for the foul. His first. And in front. Still to the back side. That is the seventh team foul on Kentucky. And so Barkley will be at the line shooting one and one. Auburn has committed just five fouls so far in this game. Boy, they looked so shaky at the outset. They oh, so they looked like you're so right, Skip. But once they got that first basket, you see that so often it seemed to broke the ice, loosen everybody up. And this big guy's come in and given him a big lift, particularly on the boards, and he's missed three in a row at the line. And he was a 75% foul shooter coming in. Tony Smith felt they could rebound with Kentucky because. They're tied with LSU in rebounding in the league, and they're seventh nationally in rebounding. Kentucky can tie it here. We have 11 minutes, eight seconds remaining in our first half. Blackman thought about it, didn't do it. Boy, that's the first time he's touched the ball. Kenny Walker has his first points of the night. He's been caught in the middle of that zone defense, and he really hadn't even had the ball. I'm sure to time out, he probably said, Coach Hall, hey, how about Kenny Walker? He can help us deep and inside. Beautiful. Harold White has his second hoop. Auburn by two again. Auburn back to the 3 2 zone. Kentucky attacking very patiently here. Well, they give the guards the shot, but they're not willing to put, put it up. up. They're sagging way, way back. Now Master does. You mentioned, Skip, that's what they're going to have to do if they're going to pull that defense out so they can get it into the big guys. That's Jim's first basket of the night. And we're now at 18 with exactly 10 minutes left in the half. Joe Dean, Skip Carey with you from the Auburn campus. Two undefeated conference in the conference teams here. Kentucky, of course. 12 and 0 overall at number one in the nation. Bowie gave it up beautifully, but the shot won't go, and the rebound is by Vern Strickland at Auburn. Can reclaim the lead. 
Good look inside the Barkley, and he puts it down. Great pass by Paul Daniel. He doesn't start, but he splits time with Gerald White, and he leads this Auburn team in assists. Beautiful penetration and pass. And he darn near stole the ball and did it. Person out for rest. And Greg Turner back into the game for Auburn. I doubt the person will be out for very long. They need his shooting, and here comes number 15, Frank Ford, back into the game. One of the great freshmen. And a lot of those in this league. Turner from way outside, it won't go, but. Auburn's getting another crack at it, and they are holding their own on the play. 8.55 left. There's the open jump. It won't go for Strickland. Kentucky can tie it once more. It's 2018 Auburn. And it is a good one. Blackman. No, it hangs it up there. He up the brick, but he got it back and lays it in. Just hustled. Missed his shot, went back and got it, fell on the floor, picked it up and laid it in. Boy, he's really quick. Isn't quick he? as they can. Saw him break open that game with Louisville to open the season here on TBS. He also played in the sports festival last year in Colorado Springs, and that's like an extra season for a player. Again, the offensive board belongs to Auburn. Strickland gets the basket. You're probably wondering how can they out rebound Kentucky with almost two seven foot guys, but they position well, they jump well, and they are aggressive. Yeah. Of course, Turpin's out at the moment. Bully in. And another turnover. It's White against Master, and White wins the move. Blackman, another turnover. Freshman mistake. Beal's going to come in the game for him. Just completely backing off the guards. They're putting a little pressure on Master, but when he, right now he could put it up. They're going to make those guards beat him from out there, it looks like. The ball handling has been very, very questionable by the Kentucky guards. Blackman just can't get it going yet tonight. Barkley it won't go, and a foul against Kentucky and against Jim Master. Auburn doing a great job with the transition. They're picking up the missed shots, they're outletting it, and they're getting it back down the court, really pushing it down there quick to make things happen. Barkley takes it almost the length of the court. He goes right there, he doesn't get it, misses, but he was fouled on the way by. Master got him. There are places he would rather be tonight than at the foul line. He's 0 for 3 on the evening. Remember, we have a 45 second clock in the Southeastern Conference. You have to shoot the ball. 45 seconds after possession, it will be turned off in the last four minutes of this game. Dickie Beal is into the game for Kentucky. Beal, a senior, coming off new surgery. Barclay finally takes the free throw. He's shaking his head, saying, finally. He's a good foul shooter. Not tonight so far. Six. Chuck Person back into the game. Barkley out for a rest. And a timeout will be called here. Timeout on the floor with 7.06 remaining in the game. And now you score. Auburn 26, Kentucky 20. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. Believe it or not, there's finally joy in Mudville, introducing the 1984 Toyota Tercel. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. This front-wheel drive Tercel will get you where you're going with more room inside than any other subcompact. The new Toyota Tercel, Toyota's lowest-priced car. And finally, there is joy in Mudville. Sunday on Centennial. From out of the West comes a different breed of man. Wild, rugged, and ruthless. The Cattlemen. Let's take them I 
own this land, and you'll pay to cross it. What? I'll stampede that herd from here to Mexico. Centennial's second big week began Sunday at 8.05 on Superstation WTBS. Here's some great programming coming up on WTBS. The exclusive telecast of pre-race activities and the thrilling start of the high endurance contest. The race will begin on the 4th at 3.05 Eastern Time and progress updates will air around the clock Saturday and Sunday. The conclusion aired Sunday, February 5th at 3.05 and the commentary provided in the great style of Ken Squire, a real expert on automobile racing. So be looking for that on WTBN. We know men's basketball is great in the Southeastern Conference, but so are the women. The Southeastern Conference has seven women's basketball teams ranked in the top 20. Number two, Georgia. Number six, LSU. Number nine, Ole Miss. Number eight, Tennessee. Number 11, Alabama. Number 15, Auburn. And Debbie Owls, Florida Gators, just moved into number 20. Winston Bennett checks in the game, and shot. Walker is credited with the tip. His second hoop of the night, and it's a four-point Auburn lead. And talking about the women, LSU, they have an All-American, Joyce Walker. She's averaging 31 points a game in this league. Clicking now. 28 22, six and a half minutes remaining. Auburn shooting just a little over 50%. They've had 25 shots at the basket. Kentucky just 17. The rebounds are 14 to 7 in favor of Auburn. That's the reason they're getting the extra shots. And the reason that they have the advantage. Look, Skip, how that defense is packed oh, yeah. back in there. in there. They're putting a little pressure on Master, but that's it. They're struggling to get it to the right for Melvin Turpin, and that's what they have to do. And when they do, he knows what to do with it. Melvin has 10 points already. 28-24, the score. In fact, he's moving out of the middle part of that defense to a wing just to get that basketball against that tight zone. He drew the foul as he missed. Greg Turner will go to the line. I'll tell you again. See the defense. It's a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Right there. They passed away from Winston Bennett. Beautiful pass. Tries to go up and shoot and foul just as he got in the air by Bennett. Greg Turner is at the line shooting two. Just a 58% foul shooter on the year. Wrong with that one, however. His third point of the night. He's a young man that they didn't think would start this year. He had a great preseason. He's a senior. He's been shooting the ball well from the field, and all of a sudden, he's given this team a big lift. And you're hearing that from a three-time All-SEC performer, Joe D. Back prior to the Civil War. Well, Joe. just about Civil War at LSU, no doubt. 5.40 remaining in our first half. Got a good job to get to the pass. Runs it a little too hard for Turpin. Went off his fingertips. He had a layup in his sights, but the pass off his hand. And Auburn can build its biggest lead if they cash in here. They could go up by eight with five and a half remaining. We mentioned when we came on, this Auburn team up and down in the early going. They weren't consistent. We had a walk call there on number 12, Gerald White, the freshman. But they've settled down once the league play started, and they're 3-0 and in the league coming in here tonight. And uh, they look like they can cause some damage. Barkley was hurt a lot in the early going. And that really hurt this team. He's given them a tremendous lift here tonight so far. Bill has it knocked loose, and White steals it back. Boy, he can zip. Great pass. Two shot opportunity before. And the two youngsters teamed up beautifully there. Sonny Smith wants a stop. Look at the pass here. White kicked it out. 15, the other freshman, Ford from Florida, tried to stuff it, was fouled as he put it up, and Sonny Smith wanted a, a goaltending call, but he's not going to get it. Turpin picks up his first foul. And Frank Ford, a 69% foul shooter, is at the line, too. The Kentucky guards are really struggling. They've struggled all night, and uh, Harden had troubles, Masters had troubles. Blackman's had troubles, and now he's with about the fifth guard. Andrews just came into the game, a freshman guard for the University of Kentucky. He's absolutely tried everybody. That's Paul Andrews, a freshman from London, Kentucky. It's a seven-point game now, 31-24. And now pressure applied by Auburn as Kentucky inbound. 
Auburn likes to full court zone press after every made foul shot if they can. There's Andrews getting it across the line. Bennett. Blocked away, but a foul prior to the block, I believe. Let's see. They got the ball in deep to Winston Bennett. He's some beautiful moves, the reverse pivot underneath, trying to get open, and he was fouled just as he went up to shoot. Right there, you saw Barkley reject the shot. That was, that was just the 16 foul skip against Auburn. From this point on, both teams will be in the bones. He was fouled before he got up to shoot. Struggling at the moment, and a whistle, and foul against Kentucky. And against Kenny Walker, his second. Wide open underneath, wouldn't go. Kenny Walker tips, doesn't go, reaches far. He in person battling. They call the foul on Kenny Walker. It's his second foul. Person's at the line, shooting one and one. That was a tough foul. Tough foul. Person 78% at the foul line. Sonny Smith, an assistant at William & Mary in his career. Pepperdine, VPI under Don DeVoe. High school coach in Indiana, Kentucky. East Tennessee State, and now Auburn. He's paid his due. He's got, to be, he's got things going and fine clip over here. Things are starting to happen on the plains. And he credits a lot of the, the success to the football coach and athletic director, Matt Guy. He's a, Sure, he's interested in football, but he really gives great support to the basketball program as well. And maybe we'll have a chance to talk with Pat Dye at halftime. Auburn was 15 and 13 last year. They were 8-10 in the Southeastern Conference race. Person has eight. It's 33-24, a nine-point Auburn lead. Kentucky scored the first eight points in this game. 445 remaining kicked out of bounds, but good hustle by Greg Tennant. Auburn's confidence has definitely been built. They can smell it. They think they can upset this team. They stay with their game plan. They're shooting the ball well, and they're very, very aggressive defensively, even though they're in the zone defense. Bowie has checked back in for Kentucky. And the house starting resume. 440 left in our first half. Andrews handles the ball on the way. Again, they try to force it inside or almost cost some possession. That's the shot they have to hit right there. They just kept daring him, but this time Bowie slipped inside and got the tip. They're kicking it out, and the guards are just not hitting that outside shot for Kentucky because when it goes inside, the defense completely collapses around them. 10 left in the half. Auburn by seven. Person from the parking lot. That won't go. Walker the rebound, and he, I think, the foul. Foul by Frank Ford underneath, and Kenny Walker will shoot one and one at the other end. Interesting thing here. Bowie, the seven foot one, guarding Person, who's six seven six eight, made him raise the arc of his shot just a little bit, and that's why he missed. Caused a foul underneath. And Kenny Walker, as we mentioned, he's at the line. There's Bowie again making his presence felt. Bennett with the ball on the baseline. Made a good move, very physical move, and got the hoop. That's his game. That's the book on him. Tough, hard-nosed, rugged, and he will flat get after it. And he knocked down Charles Barkley. Oh, it's a five-point Auburn event. Auburn swings it around the perimeter and a whistle. We missed a skip on the baseline. We couldn't see too many players in front of us. We're at court level and the same height, so it was hard to see it. It's on Walker, and that's his third, and that's a big item in the game. Turpin will come back in for him, I would imagine. Paul Galvin, the referee underneath, said he got him on the way by, and Kenny Walker with three fouls goes out of the game. Clark Turpin comes in. Yeah. 
Turner, boy, pitching a mile high. You talk about string music. There you go. I mean, he plays a symphony, this guy, because he does not touch anything but the bottom of the net. It hardly moves. A real high arcing shot. It's odd that he's shooting just 58 percent of really the line is. because he's great. His action is very good, doesn't it? Good rotation on his ball. Good arm extension to swallow through his action. Gerald White gives Frank Ford a rest for Auburn. 34-28. War Eagles are still. These Auburn freshman guards have held their own. They've done a good job. They've outplayed the Kentucky guards so far. Turner has six and a timeout is called with 3.39 remaining in the first half. Timeout on the floor. Andrew score. Do we have an upset in the making? Auburn 35, Kentucky 28. Michelob, one smooth and mellow taste tells you all you need to know. Michelob, some things speak for themselves. There's only one thing you can really call small about the Dodge Ram 50, the price. We are Dodge. There's so much that's big, like standard payload, 1,630 pounds, larger than any top-selling small pickup. And performance, more horsepower than the base Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. Dodge Ram 50 doesn't look or act like America's lowest-priced truck. We are Dodge. Dodge trucks are Ram truck. When custody fights between divorced parents turned ugly, CNN told you why and showed you how. Expect the unexpected from a CNN investigative report. Tonight's SEC action is brought to you in part by Dodge. If you're looking for rugged value in a truck, it's Dodge. We know how to build a truck. Dodge trucks are ram tough. John Sterling, Lou Hudson will have the play-by-play -play story as the Hawks and Knicks get together a week from tomorrow night. Right here on WTBS, you'll see it at 7.35 Eastern Time. Hubie Brown coaching the Knicks and his old pal Mike Fratello, his former assistant, now heading up to the Atlanta Hawks. You'll see it here a week from tomorrow night. Auburn 13 of 26, 50% shooting, 9 of 13 at the foul line, just a shade under 70%. Kentucky 13 of 24, 54%. Uh, Rebounds are starting to even up a little. 15-12, Auburn's favor, but Kentucky has turned it over nine times to just five for Auburn. Bowie back to help out against the pressure. And Paul Andrews has it across the line. Great pass. Bowie there to put it down. The pass was absolutely perfect. He didn't seem to see Bowie. He slipped loose on the backside and brought it home. It's 35-30, Auburn by five. We have 3-10 left, first half. Kentucky still zoning. It looks like more of a 3-2. I mean, a 2-3, excuse me. They changed it up from that 1-3 early. There's a good look inside, and a three-point play possibility. Bennett, the foul. Turner, a great pass, and Barkley, the hoop. You're right. They moved that ball so beautifully against the zone. It was a 2-3. There was Turpin trying to get a piece of it. He came from the uh, weak side there, and the ball was thrown beautifully away from him, and the big guy got it and went back and laid it in. Beautiful pass to make it happen. Barkley looks for his ninth point of the night. He's come off the pine. And he, it. he has nine. White and Person have eight. Great Auburn balance, and they lead by eight. Barkley really given this team a tremendous lift. Not just scoring. Bowie short hopped Andrews and he couldn't come up. Kent turnover for Kentucky. But Barkley not only scored Skip as I start to mention, but a big lift on the boards. Well, now Auburn can build their biggest lead. They can go up by 10. We have 255 left in the half. Paul Daniels double zero back in there for Auburn. Auburn has moved that ball very, very well against the Kentucky zone defense, and they've gotten excellent, good percentage shots against them. They've been patient. White. 
Wouldn't go for him. Rim the basket. Master gets the lead pass from Turpin. Kentucky's had very few great fast break or transition opportunities tonight. For the most part, Auburn's gotten back defensively. Oh, what a play by Barkley. Good effort there by Daniels, but he couldn't save it. The seven, Barkley timed that perfectly. The 7-1 Bowie went back to lay it in. You'll see it right here. And from the weak side, there he comes, the big guy. He got it right there and kicked it away. Good rejection. Charles Barkley. I doubt if Bowie has had that happen too much. Got a technical. I missed it. What was it? I think Joe Hall may have left the coaching box. That's right. They, have a, sure. they have a coaching box in the Southeastern Conference, and if you go out of the box, it's an automatic technical foul. They have tape in front of each bench, both Auburn and Kentucky. Uh, maybe before the night's over, we'll show it to you. You can see where it is. And it's an automatic thing in this league. And they shoot twice, not once. It's 39-30. I think sometimes the coach gets so into this thing, he forgets the box and just starts walking. There it is there. You see the tape? You can see it. It's uh, along the hash mark line, back toward the, the uh, press box bench. And uh, they're not allowed to go beyond that toward the press table. And that's what Coach Hall did. It cost him a point and the ball. It's 39-30, 2-15 remaining in the half, and now Auburn will have a chance to go up by 11. This matches their longest lead of the game. Daniels on the move outside. Down low, threw it away. Just Barkley intended for Persons. Persons can jump. But not that high. So Kentucky can shave it to seven. We enter the final two minutes of the first half. Auburn leads at 39 30. Esther. They can't get it done out there, but the Twin Towers go to work. And Turpin now has 12. Give Bowie credit because he kept it alive on the offensive glass. He made it happen. 39 32 our score. James Blackman about to return to the Wildcats. White thought about it, didn't do it. Person. A minute 20 remaining. 22 seconds on the shot clock, as you see. Good look by White inside, but a foul is called on Bennett. was trying to get a little penetration against the 2-3 Kentucky zone. And when he went by Winston Bennett, he reached out and grabbed him. It was a good call. Beal comes in and master out. Joe Hall desperately trying to find a guard who can get it going. And now Brett Barrup enters the game for the first time. A 6-9 junior from Centerport, New York. And Bennett goes out for Kentucky. Good shot of the Kentucky bench. Leonard Hamilton, Jim Hatfield, Lake Kelly, the assistants. White can't buy it, and Bowie the rebound. So again, Kentucky can claw back to within five. We have a minute five left in the half. Serpa, sort of a funny looking shot, but very effective. What I like there is he was hanging in the air, turning at the same time. Would have been a tough shot directly to the basket. He put it on the glass and drove it home. Good touch. And he has 14 to lead all scorers in the game. 44 seconds remaining in the half. They'll have to shoot with about six. this half in, right? If they ran it all the way down, there'd be about six seconds left in the half. Person works against Bowie. It's 39-34. The court spread pretty good. I think they want to run it all the way down if they possibly can. White gets it inside. We do. He fooled with the net. Had his hand up in it. They got excellent pass though inside. They're kicking it to that wing. Turner is filling the gap right in the seam between the zone, and they're kicking it to him, and they're really getting it in low. They're doing a beautiful job against the two three Kentucky zone defense. Eight seconds remaining in the half. Not 
out this time for Turpin. One second, that's good if it goes, and he didn't miss by much. Uh, Jack Turpin. Well, we've reached halftime, and Auburn has to be happy with the way things are going here. Don't forget, coming up, we'll have plenty of halftime entertainment for you. Several features coming your way, but right now at the break, your score. Auburn 41. And Kentucky, I don't know if that score is right. Wait a minute. 34. 41-34. It's 41-34. The board has it 41-30, but let's give you the cue correctly. There you see it. Auburn 41, Kentucky 34. If you're one of the many people whose life insurance needs are changing today, check with State Farm. I'm State Farm Agent Jim Scally. In today's economy, people's life insurance needs are changing, and State Farm is changing to meet those needs. We have a variety of life insurance products, all at a good price. We'll help you plan the program that's right for you, and we'll be there to help you keep it up to date. Check with State Farm. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Missed you. Oh, yeah? What'd you miss most? Your face. <laughs> You know how I like to touch you? Oh, that's a good thing I use Noxzema. That's why I feel so soft. Oh? Well, it's more than just a close shave. It, it soothes my skin. And, and you know how sensitive my skin is. Mm. I just know it's soft. Well, it's the moisturizer that... Glad you're back. Noxzema medicated shave cream. Share the softness. Let's go fishing. You could win this boat, motor, and trailer, plus an all-expense-paid fishing trip with me to one of my favorite lakes. Just enter Levi Garrett's Bill Dance Sweepstakes. There's over 225 prizes, so look for the official rules and entry blanks wherever Levi Garrett chewing tobacco is sold. You know you'll always come out a winner with Levi Garrett, loose leaf, or plug. Because time after time, the quality comes through. So let's go fishing. Enter Levi Garrett's Bill Dance Sweepstakes today. Long before Dallas. Doctor, that sure is a beautiful animal. Decades before Dynasty. You knew what a frightful girl I was when you married me. I did not deceive you, sir. There was Giant. Me, I'm going to have more money than you ever thought you could have. Where land is big and the power of men even bigger. Buy him out and get him out of here. James Dean, Elizabeth Taylor, Mark Hudson, Giant. Sunday morning on Superstation WTVS. We do our shows most of the time on Wednesday nights, sometimes on Thursday nights, uh, and that sometimes is uh, changed by the schedule. The show Sonny Smith is referring to is his half-hour weekly television coaches show. The coaches show has become an integral part of most successful basketball programs. The Auburn Basketball Review with Coach Sonny Smith. Our coaches show spotlight our players, and the players are the basis of any good program. And if, you, if you're going to uh, use your coaching show, it should be to improve your program and to help you in recruiting and to show the public that you have a first-class program. All right, let's take a look at the Alabama game uh, last Thursday night at Tuscaloosa. A big win for Auburn, first time since 1971. This is the tip. And, uh, the host of my show is, is Phil Snow, and he's great. He leads you into questions uh, and answers extremely well. He's positive about the program. And I would say the great thing about Phil Snow is the fact that he's so fair. If, if we play a game and we have a bad game, he doesn't show the highlights. He will show you some of the points that you're doing bad so that the, the fan of the program is seeing that it's not just a promotional thing for good. He will show the bad. Coach, uh, it was very interesting the way you changed your zones uh, in the game, and it was a factor in the game. Perhaps you could show us a little bit about the changing zones and why. Well, we're playing a lot of zone now, basically to stay out of foul trouble and to pack it in, make teams beat us from the outside. We usually show in every ball game. My coach's show is not a part of my contract at Auburn, but is solely used to uh, project uh, the great things that we have at Auburn. And it's, 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 a, it's a promotional thing, not for Sonny Smith, but to promote the Auburn basketball program. And that's the reason I do the show. Show. The income from doing the show certainly helps uh, the, the coach the ind individually, but uh, I don't think that I do the show basically for the income value of it. I do the show because it promotes my program, and if I promote my program and we become successful, the financial opportunities will come from other things. 
the best thing that comes out of doing a coach's show is being able to promote the athletes that are in your program. Being able to show them, giving a young man a chance that's never been on television to say something to the public and project itself and uh, have fun. Uh, it, uh, it's kind of been a joy to me to do television, I have no problem. The most embarrassing moment of doing a television show, uh, I think possibly would be calling a man that I'm, I have as a guest on my program by the wrong name. We have some great plays in this league every week, but coming up is the SEC Play of the Week. Tuesday night is upset night in Tennessee as this last second shot by Willie Burton beats eighth ranked LSU 70 to 69. The Volunteers trail throughout the second half by as many as eight points. When LSU missed four foul shots in the final minute, it set the stage for the 25 footer that beats the Bengals. Tennessee wins it 70 to 69. Here's Burton now with the 25 footer to the air. Straight music in Knoxville, Tennessee. Look at the team. They've gone wild over Willie Burton. He's buried underneath that stack. We'll be back with more halftime after these messages. Toyota is turning the truck world upside down, including the competition's V6s. Introducing the new generation Toyota SR5 with a first-of-its-kind electronic fuel injection system that powers this Toyota from 0 to 30, 50, 55, faster than any competitor's V6. A lot of trucks will be eating this Toyota's dust in 1984. Oh, what a feeling, Toyota! Eastern announces a unique gift for people 65 and over. For only $999 each, we can travel anywhere Eastern flies in the U.S. for a year. So we're going to visit our niece in Boston, our kids in L.A., and dear old mom in Florida. If you have loved ones 65 and over, give them the gift of travel. It's the kind of gift they've been waiting for all their lives. Call Eastern or your travel agent for details. Eastern's get-up-and-go passport. It was worth waiting for. Eastern, America's favorite way to fly. Baseball star, Jim Palmer. I'll never worry about dandruff again. Sound impossible? Not with Tegrin shampoo. Tegrin has special medicine, so I don't worry about itching or flaking, and I don't worry about dandruff, even if I don't shampoo for a day or two. The Tegrin test convinced me. Tegrin controlled my dandruff not just one day or two days, but three days. I don't worry about dandruff anymore, so why should you? Use Tegrin. Tegrin works day after day after day. Sunday on Centennial. From out of the West comes a different breed of man. Wild, rugged, and ruthless. The Cattlemen. I own this land, and you'll pay the cross. What? I'll stampede that herd from here to Mexico. Centennial's second big week began Sunday at 8.05 on Superstation WTBS. Well, there you see the story at halftime, and it's surprising, I guess, but really, Joe, not that surprising, because playing at home, this young Auburn team has looked very good. Well, they're quick, and the freshman guards that we talked about that have had problems have had a great night. They've given the, given the Kentucky guards all kind of problems. Joe Hall has tried five different guards, and they're really struggling at halftime. And Auburn handled the zone defense that Kentucky went to. Kentucky didn't match up well, man to man, and they thought they could, but they couldn't. They went to a 1-3-1 and a 2-3, and I thought Auburn handled it very well. Yeah, Kentucky's going to have to suck it up here to get back into this game, for they're down by seven at halftime, and these are, aren't the only two good teams in the SEC. Let's look at the standings for the league as a whole. Any big surprises to you, Joseph? Well, a little bit, uh, Skip, because Alabama is 1-3 and 8-5 overall. I thought they'd be in the upper half at this point, but it's early. Everybody picked Kentucky. Auburn's a little bit of a surprise. I think they picked them down about the middle. Uh, Vandy 3-1 off to a good start. Georgia, everybody thought would be pretty good, and they're hanging about the middle of the pack. LSU, a little bit of a disappointment early. And everybody is impressed, everybody very happy in the SEC about 
the way they've handled themselves in overall play. What about the player of the week in your view? Well, the player of the week is a young man that we're watching here tonight, Melvin Turpin. He has 14 points in this game tonight, and what a year he's having. The other day against LSU in Baton Rouge, it was a big win for Kentucky. You see him right here on the stuff. He was 15 of 17 from the field. And Skip, all the pro scouts tell me that they think that he's the best big man in America right now, better than Bowie, because he can score. He has magnificent touch. He boards well, and he's starting to play much better defense. Yeah, he's a, he's a very, very good one. 41-34, our score at halftime. And we'll be back with more halftime activities right after these messages. A forward pass, a lateral, and a run to daylight. When it works, it can win big. Hi, this is Bob Greasy for the Sporting News, and we have a play that'll win big for you every time. Two issues for the price of one to introduce you to the Sporting News, the Sports Bible. That's right, you get 26 issues of the Sporting News for just $9.99, two for the price of one. You can't buy the Sporting News for a lower price anywhere. You know, I've been reading the sporting news since I was a kid, and the fans and athletes themselves have been reading the sporting news since 1886. It's the magazine that gives me the no-nonsense details of all major league sports and college action, the ins and outs, and the behind-the-scenes stories of the big four action sports, football, baseball, basketball, and hockey, every single week of the year, plus highlights in boxing, tennis, soccer, horse racing, and all the rest. On the road, as much as we athletes are, we really appreciate the fact that major sports stories are covered by more than 40 feature writers around the country, reporting on the scene where the action is. To love sports is to love the sporting news, the sports Bible. Why don't you subscribe today, and here's a friend to tell you how. That's right, Bob. You get the sporting news at the low rate of 39 cents an issue, 26 issues for $9.99. That's half the regular subscription price. Why not take advantage of this special two-for-one offer now? You know, you can't get the sporting news at a lower price anywhere. To subscribe, call toll-free. 1-800-257-1234. That's 1-800-257-1234. In New Jersey, call 1-800-232-6966. Or write to the sporting news. Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. Remember... You can't get the sporting news at a lower price anywhere, so call now. With me is Coach Pat Dye, the NCAA TBS Coach of the Year. Pat, what a great year. Congratulations. Well, it has been a great year, and uh, we're excited about our future. Uh, uh, we're winding down in football, of course, recruiting a lot right now, but we're excited about our basketball team. Uh, you know, we got to play a lot of young people, and Barkley was hurt early in the year and started off slow, but he's coming back now, and I think we're going to have an exciting football team, a basketball team for the years over. Pat, I made a comment on the air that they were kind of up and down in the early going, uh, this basketball team, because of freshman guards, and Barkley had a bad back, but all of a sudden they've won three in a row in this league, and they're playing much better, don't you agree? Well, they're probably a better basketball team right now because of Barkley being hurt early because right. we had to play without him, and they, I think they developed a lot of confidence without him without Charles in the lineup. And of course, Chuck, Chuck Persons is really having a great year for us. And Greg Turner's having a great year great for us in the leader, leadership. And uh, it looks like it's coming together. You've had such a great year. And a lot of people thought you should have been number one. And the old question is that you, they're never satisfied. They want more. How about next year? Well, uh, you know, I, Coach Snellenberger at Miami and I are very close friends. And I'm just tickled to death for, for Howard and his Miami football team. Uh, they're certainly a great football team and a class uh, organization. And uh, sure, we were disappointed, but uh, we'll be back up there again. We'll be competing for it next year and in the years to come. Future looks good. Well, we hope so. Pat Dye, head coach at Auburn. Thank you, Pat. Skip back to you at the desk. Okay, Joe, thank you very much. 41-34 is our score at halftime. Auburn is on top by seven, and we'll take a peek at a few of the highlights of the first half. The players, Gerald White, one of those freshmen Joe was talking about, out of Augusta, Georgia, on a drive past Master for a layup. The Twin Towers have done well for the Kentucky team. Sam Bowie here uses that size and agility with a slam dunk. And big Charles Barkley has been effective as well. Barkley has 
nine points in this game coming off the bench and here he blocks a buoy shot something that hasn't happened to Sam very often in his career and it's plays like that that have Auburn out in front 41 34 at the break it's far from over but the War Eagles have to be very, very happy with the way this game has progressed to this point there you see the first half statistics pretty even Even at 50 percent. How about the uh, the rebounds and turnovers, uh, Skip? Rebounds even as well. And at one time in this game, Auburn right. had a big advantage in that department. So the second half about ready to get underway here. Both teams have returned to the floor, and the buzzer has sounded. Kentucky's going to have to get some offense out of their guards, or they're going to suffer their first loss of the year. That seems fairly obvious to me, Joe. Oh, it's the key, no question about it. The freshman Auburn guards, as we mentioned, having a good night. They've moved the ball well, they've made things happen, and they've done a good job defensively. Kentucky played five guards, and they did not shoot the ball well. They did not handle the ball well. And you're accurate. Kentucky's guards, if they can hit outside, they'll pull the defense to them. It'll open it up for the twin towers on the inside. If not, you're going to see Auburn, who's 8-3 and 3-0 and in the SEC, pull a big upset here tonight in Auburn, Alabama. So the second half about to get underway. Don't forget, a week from tonight, we'll be in Lexington, Kentucky, at the Rupp Arena to see Vanderbilt and Kentucky collide. But the Wildcats in a dogfight here. Game time next week, by the way, will again be 8.05 Eastern time. While we have a moment, I think it's only fair that we point out to you and to the Federal Communications Commission that this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated and Sports Productions Incorporated intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descript descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of TBS Sports is prohibited. The announcers for this event are employed by WTBS TV. Play has resumed and Auburn goes to work. Person. They're going to call a block. And a two-shot opportunity will be the result, and it's going to be on Walker, and that is four, and that hurts Kentucky. So to see again, they got it to Person. He whips Bowie right here, right up the gut he goes. He runs over Walker underneath, but they said Walker stepped in front and fouled. He blocked, and as you mentioned so often, Skip, it's the toughest call in this game. So Walker, who's averaging 11, has been held to four and will not play for 10 or 12 minutes. I would guess Winston Bennett checks in for him. They need a lift out of young Winston. Kentucky's guards at the half. Master, one of four. Harden, one of three. Blackman, one of three. Andrews, 0 for one. Beal, 0 for one. That's been their problem. Person seeks his 10th point of the evening. He's second in the league in rebound. Way is person. He has 10. Auburn's 12 out of 19 from the foul line. Auburn two out of rather Kentucky two out of three. 42-34. We're still in the first minute of the second half. Joe Dean, Skip Perry with you from the Memorial Coliseum in Auburn, Alabama. Melvin Turpin, Roger Harden. The basket counts and a foul. I think on Frank Ford. Let's wait and see. They moved the ball very well. They got it inside the zone, don't, the zone defense to Melvin Turpin. He kicked it back to Harden. And Harden really made a beautiful, he had the shot, but he made a beautiful bounce pass in traffic inside to Winston Bennett, the freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. He's at the line and a chance of the three-point play. The foul is Ford's third. And the three-point play is effective. And so Bennett comes in and picks up the slack quickly for Kenny Walker 42 37 a five point Auburn lead Kentucky back man to man defensively Bowie on first White just simply dropped that ball and a foul is called against Auburn and against Vern Strickland and that is his third Harden got a piece of that ball knocked it around good steal by Harden picked up finally by Kentucky by uh, Winston Bennett, he was fouled. That's the second team foul on Arb Auburn so far in this half. Kentucky just won. And that was a big one on Walker, his fourth. 
So Harden crosses the line with Master. Thrown away, intended for Turpin. Strickland saves it on the baseline. Ford into the lane. Partially blocked, and Bowie the rebound. Master passed up the open long range jumper. Bennett couldn't buy it, but Bowie tipped it. They're getting the ball in low now. Good pass. They got it in deep to Winston Bennett, who's so active and so quick. He posts up well. He didn't get it, but Bowie there to rebound. It's a three point Auburn game. There's a block by Turpin, and the Swim Towers doing their stuff. But inside, Auburn connects. Good offensive board work. Auburn kept it alive. They're getting ready to come back in with Barker. They need help on the glass. 18.05 remaining. They get it low to Bowie. Blocked away from behind by Person, but there's Turpin. Boy, the big guys are in business now for Kentucky. Again, a three-point game, 17-50. Well, those two big guys get they go to work on you, and it is something underneath. Kentucky has never lost their composure despite their first half traffic. Master pulls a rebound, and the Wildcats can move to within one. We mentioned it earlier. You don't get to be number one if you panic when things don't go well. That'll be an offensive foul on Bennett. He initiated the contact, his third foul. The freshman really trying to do just a little bit too much. He got it on the wing to him, trying to reverse dribble, bring it back to the basket, and he definitely ran over the defensive player. The defensive player was set up well, and he ran over him. It was a good call, and we're going to go the other way. Bennett's third foul. He comes out of the game, and Brett Barrup is in for Kentucky. What a big front line that is now. Seven feet, seven one, six nine. Daniels gets it across the line. Harden knocked it away. It goes out of bounds and will belong to Auburn. Harden sets the line. Daniels will inbound. White on the back line. 44-41 Auburn. 17-15 left. Good matchups. The baseline drive, he passed her and got the hoop. Master tried to beat him for the ball underneath, didn't get it, and it cost him two. 46 41, 16 40 left, Auburn by five. Turpin throws it away and out of bounds, and Kentucky begins to self destruct again. Looked like he was throwing it to the, the official. He saw the body, didn't pick up the shirt, and made a mistake. Auburn very deliberately to the attack. He walks. Auburn offensively, they've got Daniels, who's an excellent assist point guard on that point, and they're running a double stack on each side of the foul line, and they're getting good movement against the big Kentucky front line up there defensively, and they're getting that ball inside pretty well. More patience by Auburn, that'll help them get it inside. Another turnover. Chuck Person made that play. And the team's exchange turnovers, and the play is getting a little wild and woolly here now. Beal back into the game for Kentucky. Senior out of Covington, Roger Harden goes out. And again, Kentucky can move to within three, 16-12 remaining. Turpin. That's three turnovers in a row for the Wildcats. And this time, Person gets the hoop for the count. I think it will. Kentucky turnover. Auburn had the numbers right here. Boy, just simply throws it away. Right there. Here they come. And they come out of their run. Kentucky didn't get back quick enough. They had three on two. Beal didn't make, he didn't do the movie speed. He didn't get defensive position. 
He was lazy. He just reached, and he definitely fouled. It was a good call, and Person, their leading scores at the line for a three-point opportunity. He has first chase. And again, an eight-point advantage for Hubbard. Timeout on the floor, 15-56 remaining. With timeout, your score, Auburn 49, Kentucky 41. Baseball star, Jim Palmer. I'll never worry about dandruff again. Sound impossible? Not with Tegrin shampoo. Tegrin has special medicine, so I don't worry about itching or flaking, and I don't worry about dandruff, even if I don't shampoo for a day or two. The Tegrin test convinced me. Tegrin controlled my dandruff not just one day or two days, but three days. I don't worry about dandruff anymore, so why should you? Use Tegrin. Tegrin works day after day after day. Canon is proud to be the official 35 millimeter camera of the 1984 Olympics. Like gold medalist Adrian Dantley, it takes a special kind to perform at this level. Here, the Canon AE-1 program performs with its special shutter priority system. So its first priority is to stop motion. And it's as easy for me to shoot as a basketball. Canon's AE-1 program. So advanced, it's simple. In Olympic bobsledding, our lives depend on our equipment. She's got to hold together under more G-forces than a space shot. The whole team pitches in, because coming down the run, the sled's all we've got. The Olympics take teamwork, and Budweiser is proud to be part of that team. This Bud's for you. Oh, here's no hurry. Let's eavesdrop on Sonny Smith, the Auburn coach. Good shot. Now, anytime you got to throw a pass, zip your pass. Zip your pass now. Everybody loses. And that's been more or less the case right. tonight to this point. He talked about if they're in a zone, what you do. If they're in a man-to-man -man defense, what you do. How he wants the ball moved. Don't rattle, let them rattle you, you rattle them. And the shooting, 18 of 36 for Auburn and even 50%. Kentucky, I can't read his writing. <laughs> he'll scribble. Tell you what, for those of you who are interested, the coaches know when we sneak into their huddle, we get permission from them, so it's really not an invasion of their privacy. Some of the things the Kentucky guards have not done is take up the slack against the defense. They have not shot the ball well on the outside, and Master misses again. It's almost been too easy for them, I think. Right. They know they can have their shot whenever they want it, and they just can't get it to fall. It's a 10-point Auburn lead. And that zone backs up against the guard, Skip, that they'd moved the ball on the dribble toward the defense. They could get it inside just a little bit easier. Trying to pass too far back. He walked. The guards Big. continue to turn it over. Big turnover on Dickie Beal. And Auburn now with a chance to break it open a little bit. They can grab a 12-point lead if they convert here. 15 minutes remaining in the game. That tells the story, Kentucky 17 times. And not really that much defensive pressure by Auburn. Just poor passion. Person comes away with a big offensive board. Bowie rejected that and made a good play tipping it to Beal. Beal on the move. Boy, he's moving much better than he did at the start of the season. He operated on a couple of times on the offseason. Turpin with a turnaround. Boy, he's a good looking player. Big basket. Cut it to eight. They needed it. They have not had any kind of a run at all. Auburn still sharp and crisp, and they're handling the defense by Kentucky well. White came up hurting a little bit after that play. I really didn't see what happened to him, and Frank Ford about to check back in for Auburn on the back line. Oh, what a rebound by the big fellow. Barkley. What a lift he's given this team tonight. He, to me, has really been the difference. 53-43, Auburn. A little two-man game, and not this time for Turpin, and there's Auburn for the rebound. Mark 
Barkley gets defensive credit. He made him raise the shot. Person beats Bowie off the dribble. Beautiful. He faked baseline, came back to the middle, just a little too quick for Bowie. Kentucky wants to talk about it. Kentucky calls timeout to circle the wagons a little bit here. 13.40 remaining in the game. Timeout on the floor, and Auburn has grabbed its biggest lead. Your score, Auburn 55, Kentucky 43. It takes guts to redesign one of the world's most popular cars. Introducing Toyota Corolla, reborn. This sport liftback was reborn to please you with its balanced handling. Reborn to please your friends with its surprising performance. Reborn to please anyone with its low Toyota price. The 1984 Toyota Corolla Sport Liftback. Reborn to please the world. Eastern announces a unique gift for people 65 and over. For only $999 each, we can travel anywhere Eastern flies in the U.S. for a year. So we're going to visit our niece in Boston, our kids in L.A., and dear old mom in Florida. If you have loved ones 65 and over, give them the gift of travel. It's the kind of gift they've been waiting for all their lives. Call Eastern or your travel agent for details. Eastern's get-up-and-go passport. It was worth waiting for. Eastern, America's favorite way to fly. We're getting up a football game against the guards. Don't miss Burt Reynolds and Eddie Albert in The Longest Yard, Saturday on Superstation WTBS. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Toyota's new cars and trucks for 1984. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. We'll be with you a week from tonight with that one. Vanderbilt at Kentucky, 8.05 Eastern Time. Coming up tomorrow in the SEC, you folks in this part of the world want to see Georgia at Alabama, Ole Miss at LSU, Tennessee at Mississippi State. Sunday, Vanderbilt plays at Florida. Monday, Tennessee at Alabama, Georgia at Mississippi State. Tuesday, Vanderbilt at Auburn. Kentucky will be at Florida. Auburn went on an 11-2 run, run from 44-41 to 55-43. 16-6, the guard scoring Auburn over Kentucky. Not only has that been the difference, but the Kentucky guards have turned it over all night. Auburn has put up 20 foul shots, though, and Kentucky just four. Beal had it go in and come up. And Auburn can go up by 14. This will send some shockwaves around the country if things stay as they are. These Kentucky guards just cannot buy one from the outside, and the Auburn defense knows it. Daniel may have overpassed that when he handcuffed Barkley. Good fastball. Oh, at the knees, a bullet. 13 14 remaining. Joe B. Hall concerned about the state of things, but a long way to go. Yet another turnover, but Person can't quite latch on to. Bennett wants to drive, almost walked. That was rejected by Barkley, and Kentucky just cannot get a shot up. Barkley again, the cave. What a left. Greg Turner has 10. Four Auburn players are in double figures, and they lead it by 14 points. It's 57-43. Turpin, he has been their attack, but even he's cooled off. It's four on one. Ford could not get inside. Wisely brings it back up top to make him start over. Big Barkley off the glass. Won't go. Bowie, the deflected rebound. Beal rushes it down the floor. Master, the open jump will go. That's been the story all night. He winds up on the deck, but he's fouled. Daniels got it. First real good transition Kentucky's had, where they've gotten it down the floor very, very quickly. Auburn has done a beautiful job of getting back defensively to shut down any open court action by Dickie Beal, who's one of the better open court players in the country. Master missed again, but he'll be at the line shooting, too. Oh, they're saying that he was not in the act of shooting after the shot. After the shot. Good call. If you called it right. So Strickland checks into the game, and Person is out for a rest. Both teams have committed three fouls in this half. Louie, perfect pass for Bill. Louie threw the ball in bounds out to Beal and just slipped in underneath the basket. The defense didn't pick him up. 
tough when you're zoning, and that's what they were doing. They just didn't pay any attention to him at all. Kentucky has 45 points, and the Twin Towers have 30 of them. Will we interpret? Barkley from 17 rolls it low. He's the Great pass. Turner the basket. 11:40 left. Auburn by 14. Kenny Walker with the four fouls about to check back in for Kentucky. Joe Biel says, I can't wait any longer. Bowie maneuvers inside. It won't go. Barkley the rebound. He must have backed 10 feet off field that time. Down low, we've got a whistle and a foul against Auburn, I believe. Charging underneath. Winston Bennett took the charge. Right here, Daniels, good penetration. Then it set him up. He ran over him. Charge will go the other way. Third foul on Daniel. Walker in for a minute. And Walker plays with four foul. We'll see if Auburn takes it to him to see if they can get him out of here. Darrell White about to return to the game for Auburn. That's just what they needed. A three-point play opportunity for Kentucky. Fields gets the hoop. The foul is called on Strickland. That's his fourth. Excellent penetration by Dickie Beal on the right side. Right there. Good body control, hesitation. He got him with his body. Just as he drifted by him, he got it on the glass. Chance for a three-point play, and it puts Kentucky back in it. They can move back to within 11 if this one falls. They have 11.09 remaining. Kentucky has won this league 34 times. Five NCAA championships. They've been to the NCAA tournament 29 times, and they've won more games than anybody in the history of this game. 1,339 victories. What a school and what they've done for basketball. The oh, Kentucky Wildcats. What tradition they have. And there's the travel, and Gerald White is called for traveling for the third time tonight. The Kentucky gets it back, and right now Auburn playing into the hands of the Wildcats. Dickie feels some credit there. He put on very good pressure gets that ball and he walks and a big trip here and Kentucky got it. Turpin has 20 and he continues to roll right along. 59-50 is our score. Kentucky man to man with tremendous pressure. Much more aggressive now. Bowie still on person. Knocked away out of bounds. Belongs to Kentucky. And Auburn wants and gets timeout. Sonny Smith doesn't like the way things have been going here lately. Timeout on the floor. Kentucky will have the ball when play resumes with timeout and 10.33 remaining. Your score, Auburn 59, Kentucky 50. We'd like to send you free a CNN program schedule to help you get more from CNN's 24-hour news day. Send a stamped, self-addressed envelope to CNN Schedule, Post Office Box 93564, Atlanta, Georgia 30318. Whenever you watch CNN, you're seeing the most current, the most complete news and information available on television. You see the news morning, afternoon, evening, and overnight, updated constantly by satellite from CNN's worldwide bureaus. And you also get expert financial reports, debates and interviews with newsmakers and celebrities, even complete sports news, 24 hours of information. And we'd like to help you use CNN to find what you want to know. Mail a stamped, self-addressed envelope to CNN Schedule, Post Office Box 93564, Atlanta, Georgia 30318. And we'll send you a CNN program schedule to help you discover the variety of news and information on CNN. Late at night, you can feel a new sensation. Night Tracks, six solid hours of your favorite music video. Tonight on Superstation WTBS. Kentucky can move to within seven with 10.33 remaining. Kentucky shooting an even 50% so far in this game. Auburn just a shade over 51%. Auburn is 13 of 20 from the foul line. There's the field goal percentage. Just Kentucky's only been at the foul line for four of five, and that, to me, has been the key so far, the turnovers that have been results of basket for the Auburn Tigers here. And the last four turnovers, however, belong to Auburn. James Blackman, number 10, back in the game on the back line for Kentucky. He teams with Beal. 
they get it to Turpin. He makes a great move. And missed the shot and drew the foul. It's on Barkley. Boy, the big guys were banging in there. That's a well, Kentucky is completely determined that they have to get it inside because their guards are not doing it for him. There's Turpin with a, just an excellent move. He hesitated. He hung in the air, and he's at the line shooting two, and he's an excellent foul shooter and a chance to cut it to seven. He's got a long way to go. As they say, Hartford, in and out, wouldn't go. A lot of iron. Kentucky hasn't been at the foul line much tonight. And he's an 81.4% foul shooter. Gets one of two. And has 21 to lead all scores in the game. 59-51. It's an eight-point margin. Auburn led by seven at halftime. Opened it up to 14 a couple of minutes ago, but Kentucky has scored back. How many times did you see a 7-1 guy pressing in the backcourt? And he fouled from behind as Person missed. So he was picking up Person. 7-1 against 6-8. They let Person big bring it up. Who's an excellent ball handler. And there was Bowie, 7-1, trying to pick him up full court and did a pretty good job. He finally whipped him, though, and he fouled him from the rear. That's what's Right here, right here. That's what's amazing. You remember when guys 6, 10, 7 feet played this game but were so awkward they couldn't walk and chew gum at the same time. Now they can play guard. Skip, when I played in this league, I won't tell you how long ago, but we had guys that literally could not do what you're saying. My last couple of years, though, we had a young kid join our team at LSU by the name of Bob Pettit. I remember him. And he came along to be a pretty fair country basketball player. Auburn gets it back. Good offensive tip. Robert's probably looking in tonight down in Louisiana. Let's hope so. He's in the banking business, and uh, like everything else he's done in his life, very successful. Person may have double dribbled. He did. And Auburn turns it over once more, and Kentucky can tiptoe back to within seven. Auburn had a chance to blow it wide open, and suddenly is run into trouble. All of a sudden, they start turning it over to get some credit to the Kentucky defense because they really start clawing at them. Knocked away inside by Barkley. Bowie forces his way in and the foul. Beautiful shot off the glass. We'll show it to you again. They had a bad pass. It was kicked around right here, though. Beal gives it right back to him. One bounce, and he goes up and puts it on the glass right here. Good shot. He's got a chance at a three-point play. Big play for Kentucky. It could put him within six. Honesty compels me to report I did not see the foul, but Bowie's at the line nonetheless. What a collision there, and uh, could have gone either way. Really, you could have almost called it a charge. Bowie has 15, and Kentucky's knocking at the door. It's a six-point game. It was 14. Full court pressure by Kentucky. They beat the pressure, but Barkley fumbles it, loses it. And Beal may get a hoop out of this. Nope, Daniel comes away. It's over and back. And boy, Kentucky has really turned it on. And you're right, Joe. It's been with their defense. Very oh, they can't handle it. They're starting to shut down all the passing avenues, the lanes. They're overplaying. They're gambling. They're forcing some action. And they've got a very quick lineup in the team as far as the backcourt is concerned. Black, but a good look inside to Walker and a whistle and a foul. Foul is on Frank Ford of Auburn. That's the 17 foul on Auburn. You see it again. Blackman got penetration on the right side, got it to Kenny Walker. It was close to goaltending, wasn't it, Skip? It really was. Gerald White checks in. Frank Ford goes out. I think it's another tough call for the official where a player's fouled and the ball is kicked up there very suddenly. Somebody gets a piece of it. It's a very difficult call. Chance to cut it to Ford. Kentucky continues to peck away. violation against Kentucky take the free throw away from Walker they had a chance to cut that lead to four he made the front end of a one and one who was in the lane I didn't, I didn't pick it up I didn't see it either I just heard the official holler Joe Hall wants to know also the whole staff wants to know they beat the press perfect pass person can't buy it Barkley missed the dunk attempt 
Boy, a costly miss for Auburn there. Here come the Wildcats. Yeah. Clawed their way back. A lot of time left. We've got nine minutes. That's broken up. Rockman uh, had it. He lost it. A three-on-none break. And a big basket for Person. He's got 18. They just out fought Blackman for the ball. Lead back to eight. Auburn won't quit. They won't die against number one Kentucky's pressure. Serpent. Foul. We'll show you the breakaway again where Auburn had a three against none. Right there, Blackman. Looked like he had the ball. It was kicked away from him. Here's Person, and you talk about stuff, Arena. He brings it home. Chuck Person, leading Daniel. the Southeastern Conference in scoring. Daniel picked up the foul, his fourth of the game. He skipped that, that lane violation. Has to almost be the biggest play in this game because they had a chance to cut it to four. It cut it to five when he made the first one. He had the bonus coming up, but the line, the lane violation. Uh, took that point away and took it off the board. Turpin has 22 in the game. Greg Turner with a rebound and all by himself is Person. And Barkley finally tipped in his own missed shot. He has 13. It's a nine point game again with 8.23 left. I cannot say enough about the job he's done. Rebounding, defense, block shots, he's done it all. Guards still can't throw up the ocean. The foul on Kirkman, I believe. Barkley, he's a Wes Unso type. He takes up a lot of space in there. He was so big, so rugged, and when you get him cranked up and totally motivated, and he is tonight, he can play with anybody in the country. He's a great jumper, even with his size, 270. Foul by Turpin, 15 foul on Kentucky. Auburn will take it out of bounds. Second on Turpin, so he's a no trouble there. Parker makes like a guard, gets the first foul. Well, that makes Sonny Smith nervous. This big guy trying to dribble against the pressure. Kentucky still man to man. It's a first go pitter pass. They keep working, it won't go for him. The tip won't go, and Kentucky out of there with the ball. And Beal in a hurry. He won't go, and the foul will be on Beal. He did the one thing that he does so often. He tried to take it all the way to the basket. There were too many defensive players back on him. He plays a lot of times that way out of control. He must pull up at the foul line away from the defense so he doesn't get in trouble. And then he can kick it off, he can lob for the dunk, or he can shoot the little 12-footer. And again, the lack of confidence in their jump shots is what caused him not to do it. They have been absolutely atrocious from outside. We have 7.35 left at 64.55 over. Person gives it up, gets it back. It will not go, the tip won't go, and it's touched last by Albert. And by Vern Strickland. 7.20, and here come the Wildcats. They're down by nine. Defense! Defense! Traveling. Auburn gets it back, and Kentucky just can't do anything right. Again, the freshman, though, Winston Bennett, trying to do a little bit too much, and he did definitely shuffle his feet. Right there, he juggled him. Right there, you could see it. No question about it. Even Barkley is saying that he walked. Put it up. Person gets double teamed, but unloads for White. Auburn's done a good job offensively with spacing, in that their spacing is very good, and it's eliminated double teaming. Foul Bowie, Barkley, too. That was a good foul by Bowie because a layup was a cinch. Well, they got it in deep and they got it in low because Kentucky's man to man defensively. Auburn has moved their offense further out to give them more court to operate with. And when you get it that far spread out, if you're smart and take your time and have patience, you can get it in low. And that's exactly what they did. And the big guys at the lane shooting too. Barkley struggled at the line tonight. He is three out of six. 
was 14 off the bench. Some people call that a lucky shot. He calls it touch. That's right. <laughs> nice soft touch. Nice touch. 15 for Barkley. It's an 11 point Auburn game and time is beginning to be a factor. 645 remaining. Knocked away. Stolen again. Ahead of the pack. An easy layup. And for Chuck first. Again the Kentucky guards. They stripped him like a chicken. Stole it with the other way. And the lead is back to 13. Six and a half minutes remaining. Jim Master will come into the game for Kentucky. They're completely backing away from the guards. Completely. And another steal by Barkley. Person again. He's got 22, and suddenly it's a 15 point game. Kentucky can't handle the ball. The defense, look at the defense, Skip. It's just a wad back in there. They're begging them to shoot outside. And, and he finally got one. James Blackman finally gets one. 70, 57, 5, 55 left. I don't think I've ever seen a defense that radical, but it's paid off all night long. They keep saying, if you can beat us, do it out there. We don't believe it. Wow, deal. It's a game of inches. He came within an eyelash of a clean steal and a layup. Now Blackman leaves the game as Master comes in. Well, he's tried every guard combination he has. And it's not a question, Skip, really, of tremendous defensive pressure. No, uh, and now and then they'll trap, and uh, they'll, you know, when they do get a little penetration, uh, kick the ball away from them with good, quick hands, the Auburn defense. But it's been a question of not being able to shoot outside, and they've just wadded the defense back in there. And then when they do pass the ball, it's against the so much packed in defense that you just cannot get the ball in there. Consequently, they've thrown it away. At the head of the circle. He's been their great shooter, but not tonight, Master. Deal. Deal pops one home, and now the guards have hit a couple in a row, and that could change things around in a hurry. And a timeout is called by Auburn as they have trouble getting the ball in bounds. 5.23 left in our game. Timeout on the floor, and your score. Auburn now 70, Kentucky 59. This Bud's for everyone who takes the power and sends it down the line. This Bud's for you, for all you do. The King of Beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. What can you expect from a CNN investigative report? You can expect what many divorced parents didn't, because CNN showed just how ugly a custody fight can be. You can expect what illegal aliens didn't, because CNN showed how they earned your tax dollars while running from the law. You can expect what record pirates didn't, because CNN showed how they turned hot recordings into cold cash. Expect the unexpected from a CNN investigative report. Anything else is old news. See the 24 hours of Daytona coming up on February 4th and 5th right here on TBS. Ken Squire will have the play-by-play -play story. Free race activities and the thrilling start of this high endurance contest. Race begins at 3.05 Eastern time on February 4th. And WTBS will be right there. Auburn. The scoreboard tells it all. The time, the score, the fouls. Auburn has out-rebounded Kentucky 34 to 26, but the turnovers, Kentucky 23 times, Auburn just 14. Well, Kentucky's got to put some pressure on now, and it pays off, and a big scramble, and the ball belongs to Kentucky. It went off first. Good team effort by Kentucky. They got the double team. The spacing wasn't there on their offense. And they got a steal, a chance to eat into that lead. And uh, we're just over five minutes to go. They've got time, but they need some outside shooting desperately. They get it inside, and Walker gets the wheel to good pass. And he has six. It's 70 61, and to their credit, the Wildcats come battling back. 
Barkley in the front court. Bowie knocked that away. It was intended down low to Strickland. It's a full court zone pressure by the Kentucky Wildcats. Looks like a 1 2 2. They got a steal while ago. Almost got one there by Bowie. And there's the Auburn staff. Sonny Smith, the head coach. Roger Banks to Dester Anderson and Mac McCarthy. There's the steals. Auburn 10 to 4. It's like the turnovers. And there's your ball game to all intents and purposes, at least to this point. No question about it. Into the big fella. Barkley, it won't go for it. Beal on the move. He could fly. He backs in a little bit. It's blocked away out of bounds. Kentucky's ball. He could have been called for an offensive foul. It was no He really didn't have it there either. He, they had two men back very, very quickly, and he was trying to go really one against two. He had another offensive player coming with him, but really would have been better off, I think, pulling it up, setting it up, was taking again the little jumper. Ford comes into the game, and Greg Turner comes up. Broken up by Barkley and a whistle. And a foul against, I think, a technical foul on uh, hanging on the rim. Uh, up the foul, pushing. Foul on Bowie. Right. Here's the lob. Bowie couldn't get it. Barkley went right with him. That's the reason he couldn't get it. He can get up right with Bowie. He pushed from the rear, they said, and Barkley will shoot one and one. That's four fouls on Bowie, and that's an item in this game. Kentucky can ill afford to lose him. I just cannot say enough about the work that Charles Barkley has done in this game, and at both ends of the court. He has 16 off the bench. He is obviously about to play his way back into that starting lineup. Let's get him and back into shape. into shape, right. He has 17. 72-61, 435. Field. Good penetration. See who the foul is on. It's going to be on Kentucky, a charge. They called a walk, I think, Skip. They switched it and called it to a walk. Barkley said charge, but the referee said he walked underneath. Auburn ball. Traveling prior to the contact, I guess. Here it is again. Deal. Bounce pass to Winston Bennett. Bennett, uh... I didn't see the walk, did you? Must have been prior to the pass. That's right. all I can figure. Person. Nope. And a bad foul by Person, and he's upset with himself. So he got a piece of his shot. Really a rejection. He came back to get it and fouled. Herpin in for Bowie. A little frustration there. No question. Get the shot box and the... The last thing that they want to do is put Kentucky on the foul line now. They have things pretty much their own way, an 11-point lead. And with 23 more seconds, well, it should go off now because you can't shoot in 45. So in the last 423 of this game, there'll be no shot clock, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Auburn spread that court and make Kentucky chase. Barkley finally pulls the rebound. He has been a tower of strength. 4-12 remaining. They can let the air out now if they're of a mind to. Let's see how they play it. Right after it. They got it low. They're still in that one four with that double stack on each side of the foul line. They're getting excellent movement against the man-to-man -man Kentucky defense. They're patient now, and they got the ball in low. Herpin is caught behind Barkley. Tough spot to be against a guy like him. He comes back with that big physical body and lays it in a chance at a three-point play. And what a night this big guy has had. I think Kentucky was surprised as I was. I think they thought they'd sit on the ball for a while. There's a big rebound by Person. Now let's see how they play. They're in great shape. Oh, There's Barkley again. Auburn's still not letting the air out. They think they can score. They're up 13. They've had excellent ball movement. Winston Bennett checks into the game. Turpin comes up. Smaller lineup now for Kentucky. Bowie is back in the game. He was out for just a minute. Master and Beal on the back line. Now James Blackman will check back in. Beal down low. Bennett blocked by Barkley. What a game he has had. Big 
dribble. It's Auburn 74, Kentucky 61 with 3.23 remaining. Oh, what a play. Great pass. Barkley, great shot. Person on the move. He's got 24. Unselfish. He saw Persons wide open underneath. Defense had to come get him. Leo, the jumper won't go. Daniel was ahead of the pack. They didn't see that. They got a four on one. And a foul. The party's over. It'll start over planes in just about three minutes. Look at this. Big guy gets it, outlets it with the left hand to person. Beautiful pass. Master didn't get set up quick enough, basket good, and they've got a chance at a three-point play. Strickland, the transfer from South Carolina, filled the lane beautifully. His timing was perfect. He got there just at the right time, and that's the secret. Less than three minutes left. Kentucky needs a miracle. And they're not going to get it there. It's knocked away. And belongs to Kentucky with 2.49 left. An interesting thing, Skip. Forward number 15 is guarding Dickie Beal. He makes no attempt to guard him. He just pushes all the way back deep into the paint to cut down anything that's going to go on underneath. Kentucky calls timeout here with 2.49 remaining, and they are in a bunch of trouble. Time out on the floor, your score, Auburn 78, Kentucky 61. When you want scores, you can find them just about anywhere. But when you want more than just scores and highlights... CNN Sports is on the scene. CNN Sports now takes you time. CNN Sports has learned the NFL. Turn to CNN Sports for live updates throughout the week. Programs that put you in touch by phone. And sports reports from experts who bring the story home. When you want more than just the score, turn to CNN Sports, where highlights are only the beginning. Sunday on Centennial. From out of the West comes a different breed of man. Wild, rugged, and ruthless. The Cattlemen. I own this land, and you'll pay the cross. What? I'll stampede that herd from here to Mexico. Centennial's second big week began Sunday at 8.05 on Superstation WTBS. Our score, Auburn, is cruising against Kentucky. Meanwhile, for those of you who follow the Atlanta Hawks right here on WTBS, good news today. The Hawks beat the Indiana Pacers in Atlanta 117-106. Here, just 2.49 remaining. And Auburn is rolling right along. Your next Hawks telecast on WTBS will be the 21st of the month from New York. Blackman will inbound for Kentucky. Two forty-five left. And inside, Blackman gets the hoop. He saw the scoring. Billy and Turpin have done it all for Kentucky. Auburn is that very good balance scoring. They get it to the front court, all right. In the history of the basketball program at Auburn, they've never beaten a number one team. You can change that now. I guess Dean Smith from the North Carolina team watching with interest tonight, unless they have a game. And they're definitely number one. After tonight, they will be in everybody's court. But a long way to go for Kentucky to get well. Make no mistake about one thing, though. This is a great Kentucky team that Auburn is upsetting tonight. They're 11-0 coming in here, and the season's a long way from over, and you will hear from them before it's all over, and they can easily be at the Kingdome in Seattle. A minute 36 left. I'm really not surprised that Auburn's to win the game, but I'm surprised they're going to win it by so many. Oh. 
to Becky, and I think Sonny Smith and everybody here are doing a good job, Skip, uh, swinging the ball to the wing, and then as they bring it back toward the middle, they're trying to front inside, and the inside player just steps and blocks off the player who's trying to front him, and he's wide open if the pass is a good one. They made a good pass there, and of course they had the foul underneath against Strickland. Paul Andrew gets back into the game. Pressure on Louisville for It's all academic now. Now what a win for Sonny Smith. And give him credit, his game plan has worked to perfection. It's a gamble, you never know. I asked them before the game, what were they gonna do? And Sonny Smith and Mac McCarthy both told me we're gonna gamble with the guards. We're gonna make them beat us, and if they can't, the church will be out. We'll go home. Well, they are in business. We have a minute 20 left. Blackman, they still can't hit. Brett Barrett back into the game for Kentucky. It's 81-63. Less than a minute now, 55 seconds are all of your name. Auburn's completely letting the air out. Everybody in this building is standing. They smell it. They want it. It's keep away time. Five seconds. Blackman is called for the foul. And it's one and one time for Robert. Just left me here. I don't know what's. Oh, I guess we're gonna interview Sonny after the game. That must be what's transpiring here. I hope it was nothing I said. Well, Chuck Person is at the line to shoot the one and one for Robert, and he can make it a 20-point game. He has 25, 16 of them in the second half. Terry Martin, the 6'6 six, six freshman out of Atlanta, GA, checks into the game. For Auburn, so does Kerry Holland from Baldwin, Florida, a 6'7 junior. He comes in for Charles Barkley. Listen to the hand he gets, and deservedly so. Person again. Just out. Blackman at the other end. Back away, gets it back. Throws up the prayer, does not have an answer with 12 seconds left. You can hear the crowd count it down. Whoops. Three seconds left, Kentucky has the ball back. It is all over. 82-63, the final score. 82-63, Auburn has upset the University of Kentucky, knocking them from the ranks of the undefeated and knocking them out of the number one ranking in all the polls. North Carolina will almost certainly have that. Now let's go courtside to Joe Dean and the winning coach, Sonny Smith. Sonny, it has to be your greatest victory of all time. No question. You no beat question. a number one team. It's never happened in the history of Auburn basketball. Oh, I, and I'm so happy for our players, and I'm so happy for this university. And we've gone through some awfully hard times, you know, and this kind of thing really makes it all worthwhile, Joe. And I, I'm just so happy for those kids. That, you know, they've really been playing so hard for me, and I love them for it. 
You hadn't been feeling very well personally, but you have to feel better tonight. If you can ever get a cure out of anything, I certainly get a cure tonight. Joe, I'm still not well, but I, I feel so good about this situation. They played so hard for me. Kentucky's got a great basketball team, and we did the things we needed to do to win. We combined the running game with the inside game, got some good outside play, and our freshmen play like they might be a little bit older than freshmen. Thank you, Sonny Smith. Great win. We'll be back in just a minute after this message. <laughs> 